<laughs> uh, <laughs> I usually end, end my sermon now, so I don't know how to start. Um, you know, when I first came to ASDAC, people say ASDAC is a difficult church. Then I realized they didn't read the next line. ASDAC is a difficult church to leave. It's, uh, it's been almost 10 years, <coughs> and, and you guys are family. <coughs> and the good thing about my new role is I'm not a local church pastor, so I don't have to transfer my membership. <laughs> Having been in that 10 years almost, I know that you can actually not transfer your membership for a very long time. <laughs> Until people chase you, you can reject three times. So I can, uh, I think my member should be here for now, if you guys are okay. If it ever comes out, just reject, right? <laughs> but throughout the time here, it, it's been a, a blessing to, to journey with all of you in different ways. To see the youth from being shorter than me to becoming taller than me. To see people who are single having kids. To baptize most of the the guys that, that I hung out with is amazing. But I also like to apologize that I'm sure during these 10 years I've said stupid things, rash things, prideful things, egoistic things, inconsiderate things to many of you. Sorry for that. But thank you for tolerating, mentoring, guiding, loving, caring, in fact, when I was single, a lot of you adopted me as your son, fed me. And then when I married Tiffany, you guys adopted her as your daughter. And now many people have adopted Lucas as your grandchild. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us into your life, allowing us to be a part of your life, inviting us to your home, and uh, just showing us what it's like to be a part of the family. People say that it's hard to leave a church. I say it's hard to leave as that, not because of the building. It's actually quite easy to leave this building. You know, all the electric wiring and all that is pretty awful. But a church is not the building. The church is not, not these lights, not this projector. It's not even me preaching, but it's all of us. It's the church. And so it's hard to leave, because you can't. You cannot leave relationships. You cannot leave family. So for my, for my last sermon as the ESDEC pastor, I'll share a little bit of uh, Lucas's school. Uh, some of you have your kids sent there when it was not so beautiful. It used to be across from ESDEC, Marymount Kindergarten. Um, so the first, first week when we brought Lucas to school, we were very uh, concerned because of COVID. You know, we, we didn't get a chance to accompany him for the first few days of class. All we could do was bring him to the, the front gate and we have to leave him. Like his first ever experience of school and we couldn't even see him through the window. You don't even know who you're leaving him with. You don't even know who the teachers really are. You just got to trust and just go, okay. It's really scary when you don't know who you're leaving your son, someone who is beloved and precious to you, into the hands of, right? You're not sure. But in this place, I have no problem. I just drop him off. See you later. There. This is my sister's place. We go there all the time, we hang out, we eat her fridge, the other food from her fridge, we hang out there, Lucas falls asleep on. I cut off the other part because she actually put his leg on the lap of my, my, my sister. Like, you trust, because, not because of the address, not because of the building, not because of the, the place, but because of the person you're leaving him with. And it's my older sister, who I know, whom I trust, whom I love, I have no problem with. So when Jesus was leaving the disciple, he had a few words for them. He was going to leave them in the care of somebody else that is not going to be himself. 
So as per my practice, I will give you the verse. So if you have a Bible, turn me to John 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. It says here, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I'm not asking you to love James and keep his commandments. I have no commandments for you. But that's what Jesus said to his disciples. If you love me, keep my commandments. And so the natural question we have to ask is, what is his commandment? Because his disciples at this point really believe that they love Jesus, and Jesus gave them very clear instruction. If you love me, keep my commandments. So what is the commandment? And the only way to find out is to go to that moment just before he leaves to look at the story. If you turn me to John 21, verse 14 to 17. John 21. So Jesus was with the disciples. He revealed himself to them. They were out fishing. They were depressed. They were sad because they thought the Lord has died. And um, while well, he's met them, resurrected twice, and then they're still not sure about their future because Jesus is going to go, and they're not sure when Jesus is going to go because after meeting them, Jesus just disappeared. And so for the third time, Jesus met them at their work, which is fishing, and he did such an Asian thing. He prepared breakfast. That's how I used to tell my grandma. My grandma thinks that Jesus is a Western religion. I say, no, Jesus is very Asian. Very Asian. He always feed people like you, Grandma. And so his last action was to literally feed his disciple fish. And when they go on and say, when they have finished breakfast, verse 15, Jesus said to Simon Peter, his, his closest disciple, Calls him not by Peter, but by the other name. That is the endearing name. He says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, what are the this? There was nothing else there. There was the sh fishing boat. There was the fish. There was the other disciples. I highly doubt Jesus was referring to the fish. Do you love me more than the fish? And I don't think it was the boat, because Peter's left them before. Do you love me more than your fishing boat? He was pointing to the disciples. Do you love me more than this? The word there was a, a pronoun that refers to people. Do you love me more than the other disciples? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. I prioritize you in my life more than other people. And so Jesus said, feed my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Not more than this now, but do you love me for who I am? He said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you for all that you are. No comparison, but just for who you are. He said, tend my sheep, which is to care for my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? This time the word changed. Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. The three encounter Jesus, three question. Peter was grieved because he thought, is Jesus doubting my love for him? But not noticing that Jesus was trying to restore him for the three times he rejected him. But more than that, that the commandment is clear. 
He didn't say, if you love me, go to church. He didn't say, if you love me, keep the Sabbath. He didn't say, if you love me, pay tithe. Sometimes we do that. If you are faithful, you will be faithful in your offerings and tithe. No, he said, if you love me, look after those that I love. Look after one another. And he said, if you love me, take care of my sheep. And a lot of people misunderstand that the my sheep refers only to the Christians. No, 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 no. Jesus has said, every sheep out there is mine. Anyone who is willing is mine. Jesus says, take care of everybody who is willing to love me and wants to come to know me. Take care of them. Go feed them. As an expression of your love, take care of another. He didn't leave the disciples with a commandment to behave, which people think this is it. This is a commandment to evangelize, a commandment to go out and do the work. No. He didn't leave them with a job. He didn't leave them with a task. He didn't leave them with a job description. He left them with a relationship. And if you love me, love others. It's as though Singapore is uh, trying to make me feel bad about leaving. From the 1st of April, the day I leave, right? The week I'm going to go, right? Everything's going to open up. <laughs> you don't even need to wear mask. Bye, James. Go wear mask. We don't have to wear here anymore. But the fact is, next week onwards, we can fully sing and praise God in church. Allowed, approved, officially, if you continue wearing your mask. We can even collect offerings. We can pass the offering back around. I hope it's not broken. I haven't used it for two years. This pot will be retired. Controversial pot, container, box, whatever it is. <laughs> no more social distancing. Allowed to meet in groups of 10. It's as though, as though it's like, James, you don't get to do potluck. God is allowing the church to function normally again. And today feels like, except for that, yeah, it feels like prior to COVID. But you know what? As that, we've, we've filled up the chairs. We filled up all the chairs. But let's put more chairs. There are more people wanting to know about this community of love the love that we share among one another, the deep connection we share should not be restricted to only us and those of you online. It should be expanded. The community is moving to town. I, I nag about this because it's happening. New HDB blocks, new condos everywhere. Soon they're going to take away Far East Flora, I think. Then we have nowhere to buy flower, Lucy. But the community, the people are coming. So we're going to be at the church in the middle of all these things. Are we going to invite them in? Our excuse cannot be there's no more chairs. If there's no more chairs, we go sit next door, we go sit upstairs, we give them chairs to sit. The excuse cannot be there's no more space. If it is required, let's start a third service because afternoon there's Filipino service. They filled up. We're all filled up. Let's have a third one. Let's even have one tomorrow just so that they can come to church. Do we dare to do that? Become the church that is the church of the neighborhood. Take care of those who Jesus loved. Take care of not only one another who you see from Sabbath to Sabbath, day to day, but take care of those that you may not just yet know. Nine years and nine months ago, you didn't know me. Kind of. I was back during summer. And then one winter, two Gerbers arrived in Andrews University. Shall we have a meal? Why are they here? Over the course of the meal and later with different emails and calls, I realized I'm coming to ASDAC. 
And time flies that it's been nine years and nine months. So I'm going to go. But I hope that you've understood my heart that I've been communicating for 10 years. Thank you for your love for me. But more important to, the, to me than that is, do you love him? Do you love Jesus? More than when I first met you. And will you continue Worship him, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Will you continue to love him more, even though James is not here? <clears throat> Will you share this love with others who have not known this love yet? I hope that when I come back to visit in a year's time, not that long away, that I, I have to stand at the back. And I'll see so many faces I don't know. Because you guys have ex continued to feed, to tend, to invite more sheep into this pasture. That is just overflowing with wonderful green pastures that will feed and nourish souls that come among us. Will you love him more in your personal relationships with one another? Will you love him more in how you live and act in your workplace? Will you love him more with the how you plan day to day? What motivates, what drives you? Will it be driven by a love for Lord Jesus? But it's not up to you. I mean, let's go back to chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 16. After Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He gives the promise. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. So I'm okay to leave. Because I'm not leaving you with strangers. I'm not leaving you with somebody I don't understand, somebody I don't know, someone that I don't trust. Because I know that who I'm leaving you with loves you way more than I do. Because I know who I'm leaving you with is not the next pastor. I'm leaving you with the God who died for you. And God will take care of you. And so I'm okay to know. And I want you to know that I am taken care of by the same God. Where I'm going, the same spirit of truth is with me forever. The same God who loves you so much loves me too. And whatever it is, the chaos, craziness that I may be facing, it's okay because God is there already. I'm still meeting with him. I'm going with him. I'm just going where he's calling me to go. Worship team. Uh, when Pastor called us to sing this song, he told us that this is our his message to all of us.
could maybe impress you with tender words and a harmony, a clever rhyme or two. But if all I've done in the time we've shared is turn your eyes on me, then I fail that what I've been called to do is someone else I want you to see. Will you love Jesus more? moment is a memory will you remember his face will you look back and realize you sense his love more than you did before I pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus We pray. Heavenly God, Father, I thank you for the blessings of getting to know this church in the past decade. And Father, Lord, I know that you love all of us very much. And you continue to help us to grow in our love for you and for one another. So every step we take, we take an assurance of the love of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.